Do you know the, Mupp the have you heard of the Muppets? And they used to have like a little person singing. Do, 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 do. Pachakucha. Do, 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 do. Pachakucha. Do, 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 do. Help them out. Pachakucha is a Japanese word for chit chat and is the name of a presentation format created in Japan in 2003 by Astra Klein and Mark Dyson, two architects looking for a way people could share their work quickly and simply in public. Since then, the idea spread to over 700 cities around the world. At every Pecha Kucha night, creative thinkers come together and share their ideas with only 20 images shown for 20 seconds each. Pecha Kucha, a fast fun format. Find a location, join the conversation. Montreal! Don't you dare be sour! I'm bringing the positivity, the power of positivity through art. I'm Craig Biedemann. You might know me a little bit from the internet, um, but I, I, uh, I am here to talk to you about art therapy, mental health, and the job search. My job search lasted 14 months. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that hell. Um, so, <laughs> look at how excited I was. Look how young and naive and ready to go. This is graduation. I won an award during my graduation from my program, which was really exciting. I also got an interview offer during my graduation, which also made me feel like I was ready to take on the job search. But then the reality hit that I had no idea what I was doing. Because the, the rejections started piling up a lot faster than the interviews were actually being offered, and I genuinely felt overwhelmed, and that I was really down on myself, and I felt like a complete failure. My savings also started to dry up kind of quickly, which made me have to think real quick about how to stay creative, stay connected in the field, and pay my bills at the same time. So I started painting, and I love painting, and I love being creative. I, I painted to survive during my year off in graduate school, or my year off between undergrad and graduate school, and I was able to pay my bills, but I was living in Oregon then. It's a little cheaper to live in Oregon. A little bit. But I figured, why don't I pay for my colleagues and use my social network? I feel like I've developed a pretty good network, so I was going to give it a shot. I had, no, I had nothing to lose. So I reached out to that awesome Student Affairs Facebook group, often contentious, but uh, pretty, pretty good support. Um, and I asked, hey, who needs some office art? I'm willing to make you art. And by the end of the first week, I had 30 commissions. 30. That was amazing. This was a great way for me to stay connected with my colleagues and get some work done. But I also had to interview for jobs because I needed a job. So sometimes I would actually go to interviews with paint stuck in my fingernails. And I would use this as a little bit of a talking point on, oh, this is kind of how I support myself you know, through my job search because I don't have a job. And I had to find a balance between applying for jobs, interviewing, and painting because I was getting a lot of commissions. Some days I painted, some days I just stared blankly at higheredjobs.com, but most days I tried to do a little bit of it all. Resume, cover letter, and my DIY art business. And some days I just cried, because I suffer from depression and anxiety. I've suffered from this since I was a teen. I've always been that ADHD kid, that kids that no one really understood and often rejected. So a lot of the rejection I was feeling from our field made me feel a constant lack of like any sort of mental health support. I've even attempted suicide multiple times in my life. And my suicidality makes me think of killing myself almost every single day. I live with this. I also almost attempted suicide during my job search, but my partner intervened. This is a reality of the job search that people don't really pay attention to or don't know. And candidate follow-up is so important to mental health because I would follow up with emails and I would get nothing but, I would get nothing or I would just get empty rhetoric, which makes me feel like my interview meant nothing to you when it meant literally everything to me because I needed a job for my mental health to be okay. As little did I know that painting would actually become therapy for me. This is my painting flannel. It's covered in paint. And when I was wearing this to paint, for those of you I've painted for, it made me feel comfortable that I could actually be in control of something during a time when I was in control of anything. And the reality was that I was really only paying my personal bills. 
My partner, Katie, bless her heart, was covering all of our rents while I just barely scraped by to pay my bills. Because Boston ain't cheap, y'all. <laughs> and this is another unnoticed burden of the field. Partners carry a lot of stress. So for 14 months, we really struggled. And a lot of the job search prep really focuses on professional aspects, which is fine. But we really need to focus on mental health, financial literacy, and wellness. I was told multiple times during my job search to not talk about my mental health. Also, fuck the phrase, trust the process, because it's bullshit. The process doesn't work for everyone because the jobs aren't there. And a lot of this is caused because we have overflooded the post-grad job, job market because grads are just getting shoved through student affairs grad programs without proper preparation, and it's not doing well for our field at all. So yeah, I got a little cynical. And I have many friends still searching for jobs years after being graduated from their program. I see a hand, yeah. But I never gave up. I kept applying, and I had plenty of panic attacks, but then someone would commission a new piece. I had so much support for my art, and my art got into a lot of offices, which is really cool. And this morning, I commissioned my 200th piece since last June. 200. I was successful at something at a time when I felt like I was failing at everything else. But somehow I'm still alive. I'm surprised to be alive. Because I lost my father during my job search. And that sucked a lot. And I even had to step down from my role with the NASPA Region 1 Conference Planning Committee a week before the conference started because I had a massive panic attack and I shut down completely. But eventually, I got a job. That's pretty cool. I am now the Health Education and Wellness uh, Promotion Specialist at UMass Boston. Uh, I am supported by my supervisor who hired me because I talk about mental health and because of the way I talk about mental health with my students. So I feel so great. And finally, we really need to support our graduate students beyond just securing a job. A job is important, but our health is more important than a job. Work-life work, work balance is important. We just got to prioritize it a little bit better. Thank you. So I'm not actually done. Um, I'm going to just a little bit address something that happened this past weekend on the internet. So it's kind of uh, fitting that there was a, uh, a presentation on cyberbullying, which was really, really uh, connected with me a lot because I was sort of victimized this past week. If those of you who are familiar with the Student Affairs Facebook group, there was a big to-do uh, about a little bit of a podcast that came up. But all I wanted to address was the fact that it, it is imperative in our field that we support young professionals and that we support grad students and that we do not see them as anything lesser in this field just because we're just new. I don't think it is any, for any reason to shame a new professional being labeled a rookie and not really understanding this field. We're kind of the closest to your students right now by age. And we kind of have a good idea of the pulse of the students. So really, really focus on how you treat everyone in this field. I've seen so many stories of workplace bullying in just the last few days online, and I'm so glad people are speaking out about it because it is so, so important that if we want to see our field succeed, we need to take care of each other and not be at odds with each other. That's really all I have to say, and thank you, and I hope you enjoyed all of this. Yeah.